This is part 20 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing a Razor Page that help us add a new employee. In our previous videos in this series, we already implemented Edit Razor Page, the HTML markup and the code required to implement a Create Razor Page is very similar to an Edit Razor Page. So instead of creating a separate Create Razor Page and duplicating the HTML and code, we are going to modify the code in Edit Razor Page. So it can be used for both the workflows, that is adding a new employee as well as editing an existing employee. This is the same project we've been working with so far in this video series. To be able to add a new employee, the first thing that we need to do is include add method within the employee repository service interface and implementation classes. Employee repository service is in this services project. So let's open both the implementation class and the interface. The signature of add method is very similar to update method. So let's make a copy of this and change the name of the method to add and the name of the parameter to new employee. Our obvious next step is to provide implementation for this new add method. So within mock employee repository class, click on the down arrow right here and then select this option implement interface. At the moment, we are still working with in memory data. So we have to manually compute the ID value of the new employee being added. When we add support for SQL Server, we do not have to manually compute the employee ID value. This will be automatically provided by SQL Server when a new record is inserted. We'll see that in action in our upcoming videos. For now, let's compute the ID manually. So new employee dot ID equals underscore employee list dot max because we want the max employee ID. And to this, we want to add one. Next, add this new employee object to the employee list. So underscore employee list dot add and to this method, we pass the new employee object. And then finally, return the new employee object. This completes the changes required in our employee repository service. Our next step is to include this add navigation menu item. Here is the HTML required for that. The link text is add and when we click this link, we want to go to the edit razor page in the employees folder. And these classes that you see here are bootstrap classes for styling. Our navigation menu HTML is present in underscore layout dot CSHTML file. So let's open this file. Our navigation menu items are right here. Let's make a copy of the employees link. Change the link text to add and when we click this link, we want to go to the edit razor page. Let's run this project and see what we have got so far. We are on the home page. Notice when I click this add navigation menu item, nothing happens. We are not able to get to the edit razor page. That's because if we take a look at the edit razor page, Notice it has got this ID route parameter. This is mandatory. We have to provide a value for this route parameter to be able to get to this edit tracer page. But when we are adding a new employee, we will not have a value for ID. So just like how we have made this handler route parameter optional by including a question mark, let's also make this ID route parameter optional. Now, when we click on add, we are redirected to the not found razor page. This is because if we take a look at the onGet method, this method expects a value for the ID parameter. We are not passing any value here. So it takes the default value 0 and it tries to find an employee with ID value 0. We don't have such an employee. So this employee property is null. If it is null, we are redirecting the user to the not found razor page and hence we see it here. To fix this, let's make this ID parameter nullable integer. Since we made it nullable, let's check if it has got a value using has value property. If it has a value, then we want to retrieve the respective employee details, else we want to create a new employee. Next, we need to do a similar change in on post method. We want to call this update method of the employee repository only if employee ID is greater than zero. So if employee ID is greater than zero, then call update method to update the existing employee details, else call add method to add a new employee. Now, when we click add, we are redirected to 
slash edit and in the URL we are not passing a value for the employee ID route parameter because we are adding a new employee here and then we have a blank form here which we can use to add our new employee. One issue here is the text on the page. It still says edit. Now we want to change this to create when we are creating a new employee and to edit when we are editing existing employee details. Similarly, let's change this button text to save so we can use the same button for create as well as update. In the display template, let's create a variable called page header. If model.employee.id is greater than zero, then we know we are editing an existing employee details. So let's set this variable to edit else let's set it to create and then instead of hard coding the text here to edit let's use the page header variable if we scroll a bit down we have our update button right here let's change the text to save now when we click add we see the text create instead of edit and when we submit this form without providing any of the employee details all our validations work. Let's also make this department field required. To make it required within the employee class, let's decorate this department property with the required attribute. Next, in the display template, next to the select element here, let's include validation for tag helper. We already have the tag helper right here. Let's make a copy of this and then change the property name to employee.department. If we submit this form now, all of our validations work, including the department required validation. Let's add a new employee called Sam. I'm going to select this image, sam.jpg, click save. Our new employee, Sam is here. Let's click edit to edit his details. Notice the text on the page says edit. In the URL, we have Sam employee ID. Let's change some of his details. Let's change the name to Sam2 and also update his image from Sam.jpg to Sam2.jpg and then click the save button. Notice the image and name are updated as expected. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.